gosh. Newsflash, Heather cracks herself up. <laughs> Newsflash, okay. <laughs> like every service she watches it, she laughs. <laughs> okay, hi, my name is Ann Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here. Good to see you guys. Yes, yeah, so glad you guys showed up this morning. Um, John, my husband, is the lead pastor, and he's not here this week. He's in Thailand. And so I've been living this whole week without him, and it's, it's been a little bit rough, you know? Uh, we all um, overslept on Tuesday. <laughs> like, he, he wasn't there to wake us up, you know? Uh, and then <laughs> um, uh, one of my kids got suspended. Uh, and so, like, it, I know, I know, my... my uh, my mom is like, huh? <laughs> but, um, it was uh, Toby. He played a, a prank in August, and he got caught now. So, it, he, you know, they took a picture. And it, here, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to show you the picture. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. OK. Um, but anyway, <laughs> shout out to all the single parents out there doing it every week alone. You know what? Give yourself a round of applause, because it's no joke, OK? Um, and so anyway, I also want to give a shout out to our um, CP kids, CP youth. They're over there every single week killing it, watching our kids giving us a break, you know, honestly, right? <laughs> They're giving us a break. And so anyway, I just want to say thank you, God, for, for them as well. So the title of my message today is Have It Your Way. And so obviously it's to the Lord, have it your way. And I wanted to just share a little silly story about me not having it my way. So on my birthday, um, my birthday was October 21st, and it happened to fall on a Sunday this year. And so Sundays are hard because John is working. Um, and so, but I said, you know what, just take me out to eat. That'll be good. I I'm turning 45. Well, I'm 45 now. So 45, hey, I'm still alive. Okay. But I'm 45. And um, so um, we made a plan to go out to eat for dinner, but actually I changed my mind after church. I'm like, I'd rather eat lunch because listen, I'm 45, my metabolism is not the same as it was. I'd rather eat like a heavy lunch and then like barely eat dinner. You know, I don't want to eat this like big honking dinner and then go to bed. So, so I said to John after church, I'm like, hey, let's, um, I changed my mind. I want to go to lunch um, instead of dinner. He's like, no. I'm like, what? What? It's my birthday. What, what are you talking about? He's like, no. No, I'm tired. I want to go home. I'm like, no, no, it's my birthday. Remember, I'm 45. Like, we're going to go to lunch. You know, we're going to go out to eat. And he's like, no, no, I can't. So then, you know, we got into like this argument, like this, you know, heated fellowship, right? And, uh, and then ultimately he wouldn't back down. And I'm like, wow, this is like next level. So we went home. I'm like slamming around in the kitchen, like just rah, just all mad um, and just not talking to him anymore because I'm getting angry. So then I had this plan to go out uh, to get my nails done with my friend. I'm like, not even saying goodbye to you. I'm just leaving the house. Like, you know, I'm like that mad. Okay. Then I come back from getting my nails done, and then boom, he has a surprise party for me at the house. I'm like, oh, whoopsie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so mad. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so sometimes there might be bigger plans than your plans. Amen. Amen. Your plans might not be the best. So <laughs> to the Lord, I say, have it your way. Yeah. Right? Amen. Have it your way, Jesus. And so we're going to be reading out of Luke 5 today. It's a pretty familiar story. I'm going to read it out of the NIV version, but um, we're going to start with verse 1. You can follow along on the screens. So one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from shore. And then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. So I want to back it up a little bit. The story goes pretty quickly, but I just want to slow it down a little bit. So our main character in this story is Simon Peter, and he goes by Peter. And this guy, Peter, you know, he gets a bad rap. If you've been around church for a long time, you know that pe people try and like talk smack about Peter. But I think Peter is a lot like us, you know. So um, he's a rugged fisherman. Uh, he's a hardworking man. And he had been working all night and caught nothing. Have you ever experienced that? Like, working and working and then having nothing to show for it. 
it, it actually really stinks, you know? And so um, in first service, some, some guy was like, amen, it happens to me all the time. I'm like, okay, then we're going to pray for you. Okay, but, you know, but at the end of a long, hard night where he fished all night and caught absolutely nothing, he just wants to go home. He is tired, he's exhausted, he's discouraged, he feels like a failure, and he just wants to go home. But you don't get to go right home. When you're a fisherman, you have to wash your nets and you have to repair them. Because sometimes, you know, sticks will get in your nets and and you have to wash your nets and you have to repair them before you go home. And so I'm just thinking to myself, if I'm imagining and dreaming, what is Peter thinking about the whole time he's fishing, the whole time he's washing his nets? Like, what are his thoughts that he's thinking to himself? You know, is he having these like woulda, coulda, shoulda thoughts? You know, like, gosh, I, you know, I I should have gone earlier. You know, I would have caught a lot of fish. I should have gone to the east of the lake instead of the west. I would have had something to show for all my efforts. You know, or was he thinking to himself just a lot of thoughts of worry? Like, how are my kids going to eat this week? I have nothing. What what are we going to do? How how are we going to make it this week? How am I going to pay my bills? I have no money, right? Or is he thinking thoughts of anger to God, like, God, I'm doing all the right things. Where are you? Have you forgotten about me? Where are you? Have any of you ever had any of those thoughts, right? Peter's like the, the normal guy, right? And, and he's just struggling after this night of having nothing. And then Jesus shows up, right? And Jesus is this magnetic or polarizing guy, and wherever he is, there are crowds, Wherever he is, there's just, it just gets to be swarms and swarms of people. And before Peter even knows it, Jesus had jumped inside of Peter's boat, didn't ask for permission, right? Just jumped right on in and says, hey, can you push me out from the shore? Can you push me out? And that's, and that's where Peter is at this point. And he's thinking, you know, I really don't want to be anywhere near that boat right now because that boat is a place of my failure, You know, it's a place of my pain. It's a place of my emptiness. It's a place I just want to leave. It's my place of discouragement. And you're jumping in that boat right now. And here's my first point is this. Allow your pain to be used as God's platform. Allow your pain to be used as God's platform. Peter's looking at that boat and going, I'm done. That boat is painful. I don't want anything to do with that boat right now. All I want to do is wrap it up and go home. But Jesus jumps in there and says, in that place of failure, I want to preach the good news. I want to preach the good news of the gospel right there in your boat, that place of failure. But if you're anything like me, you don't want Jesus to show up in your bad, in your bad stuff. You know, you want Jesus to show up in like your shiny stuff, like your good stuff, like your successes and your and your accomplishments and your achievements and all the great things. Like I hate when people come over unannounced. Like I hate it when people come over unannounced because listen, I need time to clean my house, right? My toilets might be really nasty. You know, there might be crap all over the place. And I don't want you to come over and see that. Like if you're gonna come over for a visit, I want it to look good. Like I actually live that way, you know? And and Peter didn't have a chance to do that with Jesus. Peter, God, God, Jesus shows up on the night where everything is jacked up. You know, everything is a wreck. There's exhaustion, depletion, failure. But do you think that's a coincidence? No. No. Everything that happens with Jesus is done with intention and purpose right? And he shows up on the night that Peter, so discouraged, so disappointed, and he says, let me use that to preach my good news. Let me. So it just seems weird, though, because it's, it's counterintuitive, right? Like, we're supposed to put our best foot forward, right? We're supposed to, you know, kill it and, and achieve all these things. But do you know that Jesus is attracted to our weakness? And that sounds weird, But let's read in 2 Corinthians 12, and it says this. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. Read this together with me. My power works best in weakness. Straight from God's word, my power works best 
in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. So it's not about me anymore, right? Because I'm limited. I've got failures. I've got disappointments. But it's the power of Christ that can work through me. So Jesus wants to bring his message through you, no matter what your disappointments, no matter what your failures, he wants to preach the good news right there. But Peter, at this point, he had a choice, because even though Jesus already jumps in the boat and says, hey, can you give me a push out? He did have a decision to make, right? He did have a choice to say, no, I'm done. Like, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm wrapping up for the day. You know, my mom, uh, when I was growing up, my mom had a deli in D.C., Uh, We grew up in Virginia, but my parents always had uh, business in Washington, D.C., and it was in the southeast side, which is like the worst side, you know, with all the crime. Uh, And she would go hard for 12 hours. Like, she'd go hard. But if she's, like, done cleaning up and, you know, getting all the grease out of the grates and all that stuff after all that scrabble and grits and all that stuff, you know, if you ask her for a sandwich, she will cut you, you know, because she's done right? It's her exhaustion speaking, like all 105 pounds of her. She's be like, no, I am done. I will cut you, you know, because <laughs> exhaustion, like when I'm exhausted, I'm my worst version of myself, right? I'm my worst version of myself. And that's where Peter is, right? But God says, let me come in and use that, all of that as my platform, Let me me use all of that as my platform. Give me that area of pain and let me make it a place of miracles. And so let's keep going in verse four. So when Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And Jesus, he, <laughs> he's taking this guy, Peter, and he sits on his boat and preaches and preaches. I don't know how long he preaches, but I'm sure when Peter was sitting there listening, he was probably getting all the feels. You know what I mean? Like he was hearing the word of God preach the word of God. <laughs> There's nothing like, I mean, you think you've heard great preaching before? You've you've not been, like, seeing Jesus face to face, like, preaching the word of God. The word of God, preaching the word of God. And I'm sure it made him all tingly and, like, ooh, like, yeah, mm, yeah, like, stank face, like, yes, that was good, yes, preach it, yeah, you know? And, but then, you know, there, there comes a time when you hear that stuff, And then Jesus gives you a command. And then afterwards, it's like, say what? What? You know, because it's one thing to hear the word of God, but then it's another thing to be commanded and to um, be given the opportunity to obey the Lord, right? And so when Jesus spoke, though, it was a command with a promise. said, go into the deep and let down your nets for a catch, right? He wasn't saying, hey, Peter, let's... Let's try and go out into the waters and and see what happens. You just never know, right? Let's go out and and do a little more fishing for the day. No, he didn't say that. He said, Peter, go deep and let down your net for a catch. It was a command with a direct promise. Go deep, let down your net for a catch. And so Peter had a choice at that point. He's like, you're giving me a command right now. Do I want to obey it? You know, because obedience requires action, right? It's like, I just gave you a promise, but you got to do something first. But do I want to do it? This defies all logic. I've been fishing all night. If there were fish to be had, they would be in my boat right now. You know, but, um, and I'm tired, but obedience requires pushing through exhaustion, Right? changing your plans. He's saying, I'm done. Can't you see I wash my nets? I'm ready to go home right now. But Jesus is saying, no, go in the deep and let down your nets for a catch. You know, we have our own story of letting down our nets for a catch. And John has been on this journey um, for the past 15 years to find um, a solution for his tumor situation. So he has this condition. And um, Oh, he told me that uh, he doesn't like to talk about it because he gets a lot of, like, advice. And so, (laughs) 
No advice, please. Okay. So, but, <laughs> but um, okay, so, you know, it's been 15 years of going to doctor after doctor and trying to figure out, like, what to do with these tumors. And um, finally, we decided in August to go to Mayo, the Mayo Clinic, because, you know, people had said to us, you know what? The Mayo Clinic is going to give you the answers you need. The Mayo Clinic has the most brilliant people on earth. Like, let's just go to the Mayo Clinic, and, like, you'll go to every doctor there, every department, and they'll have something for you. So we end up, like you know, getting all, all the things ready, and we go to Mayo in August, and it, it just was really hard. Like, we went to the uh, geneticist, and that lady had, like, bad news for us. Then we went to the genetic counselor after that. She had more bad news for us, right? Then we went to the colorectal surgeon, and that guy was like, oh, yeah, I can do, I can do your surgery for you. This is going to be amazing. I just need to get the neurosurgeon on board. But yeah, yeah, we're, you know, all, you know, we're going to do this. And then we go to the colorectal guy, and oh no, the neurosurgeon guy, and he is just the rudest dude I've ever met, right? He's like, why are you here? I'm not doing your surgery. No way. Your tumors are many, and they're massive, and I like doing surgeries, and I'm not going to do your surgery. Why are you here, right? He was rude, dude. Oh, okay, for real? Like, after that, after that, I just wanted to go home and cry because I was so discouraged, so hopeless, like the way that he spoke to us, the way that he communicated, like just, there's nothing for you, there's nothing for you, there's nothing for you, why are you here, why are you here? And so John and I went to lunch, and I just cried and cried. I couldn't get over it, right? And um, we had one more appointment after lunch, and we're like, should we just go home? Should we just forget it? We're so tired, and I don't know if emotionally I can take another, like, appointment like we just had. You know, I just, I don't know if I can handle it, Right? And then John and I were just talking about it through lunch, and he's like, yeah, maybe we should go. You know, just one more. Let down your nets one more time. You know? It turns out that's the guy that actually has help for us. You know? And it's not completely a done deal yet, but it's a faith journey for me to even tell you this, but I really believe that God has something for us there, and it was at that last appointment when I was so done. You know? But God is saying to you, let down your nets for a catch. Let down your nets. Don't give up. Do what he's called you to do. Don't give up. Don't give up. So do whatever he tells you to do. Lord, have it your way. Whatever it is that he's asking you to do, do it. You know, don't just give up on your teenagers because they're not listening to you right now, right? Don't just, you know, close the doors on your business because you have a little downturn right now, you know? Don't put away all the songwriting just because it seems like you're not striking gold right now, you know? Don't don't stop with your fertility treatments just because it hasn't worked just yet. Keep going. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Do what he tells you to do. Go deep. Go deep and let down your nets. Amen? Amen. You know, as a church family, we're um, we're doing something like that where we're going deep and letting down our nets. We're doing a campaign called All for the One, and we really believe, like it, now it's already two years ago, we believe that God spoke to us and said, expand your building. Expand your building. Blow out this back wall. Make space for more people. And it, the funny thing is, like since that point, we've had a, a downturn. You know, we, we don't really need space except for the 1030 service. And it's been really, really hard to be like, should we go deep and let down our nets? Everything says No. Everything says we don't need it. Should we really go? But when I'm in a place of prayer, I hear the Lord saying, get ready for the greatest harvest of your life. You know? (laughs) Hebrews 11.1 says this. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So we can live in the faith realm where there's a different reality, a better reality, a greater reality, a God reality. Faith shows the reality, the God reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. And so we need to partner with God to grab hold of his promises. Don't partner with your current reality. Don't partner with lack, failure, Fatigue, exhaustion, keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's keep going also in in verse 6. 
when, when they had let down their nets, when they had done what Jesus had said, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Can you just imagine that? They began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And so they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. So Peter lets down his nets and boom, there's so many fish. I mean, it's like, can you just see the dollar signs like going, you know, ding, 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 right? Like your boats are going to break. There's so many fish. And after a whole night of not catching anything, of coming up empty, empty pockets, you're like, thank you, God. Yeah, praise Jesus for a lot of fish, a lot of dollars. My bank account is broken, right? But... It's not even that. He doesn't even have that kind of response. His response is fear, right? He, and it's fear because he realizes, wait, this is, this is nothing that I've ever seen before. I'm with God. I am with God. And, 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 and I'm with God, <laughs> you know? And, and a real encounter with God will show you who he is, but it will also show you who you are. Right? And so at that moment, Peter, he has so much fear. Like, I'm with the Almighty God, the God of the universe, the God who spoke everything into existence, the God of heaven and earth, and I am a sinful man. And so he comes to Jesus saying, I am a sinful man. I, and it's so good to be humbled by God. It is so good to know that this world is not all about you. Praise the Lord, right? That your life is not all about yourself, right? Thank you, God. Seeing God for who he really is will make you see yourself for who you are. Isaiah 6, 5 says this. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And there's something so majestic and powerful about him that it brings this sense of, wow, humility. Um, in my prayer life, I'm going to just give you a little picture into my prayer life. And it's a little weird, but you know what? It's okay. The Bible is weird too, right? So I'm always a lady with the weird prayer stories. Okay, so a couple years ago, I was in this journey with the Lord in my prayer time, really believing and understanding who God is as my father and getting really, really close with the Lord. And I kept asking Jesus every day, like I, it would be a consistent prayer that I was praying over and over, God, I want to feel you physically. I want to know you physically. I want to know your power physically. I want to see you physically. And, you know, I've, I've had physical healings before. I've had, like, feelings of hot, hotness on my body before. But I kept praying that same prayer, God, I want to know you physically. I want to feel your physical touch on my body. And so one night, John and I had gone to bed, and John falls asleep the minute his head hits the pillow. It takes me a lot longer. And I'm, I'm laying there, and all of a sudden, the power of the Lord fell on me. Right? And it's just like this fire that feels like it's consuming my body. I don't know how else to describe it. It was like this weight. It almost felt like pain. It actually did feel like pain. The fire of God just fell on me and fell on me. And inside my head, I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. And I got really scared. I got scared because this, it was so intense and so like heavy on me. I'm like, I want it to stop. No, 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 no. I take it back. I take it back. I don't want it. I don't want it, you know? And I, it wasn't stopping. And so I'm like, I need to get off this bed. Maybe I just, and so I kind of like rolled myself off the bed. I'm like, if I go to the bathroom, maybe it'll stop. It stopped. It stopped. Um, and I've never prayed that way again because, you know, <laughs> there there was something that happened today that really shook me. You know, it, it shook me. Um, and that day, I realized, like, God, I can't mess with God. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, he is who he says he is. And there's a power of God 
um, that is much greater than anything I could do on my own. But I love how Jesus doesn't leave Peter in that humbled state, you know, on the ground in desperation. Get away from me. I'm a sinful man. But Jesus says, no, receive my peace. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? And so this is my third point. Receive God's peace and say yes to God's plans. Did you notice all the fill-ins were peas? Okay, anyway, just, we went pee today. Okay, um, and then, <laughs> it's like five-year-old humor. Okay, um, so back to this. So Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And so they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. So not only did Jesus change Peter, he changed all of his plans. You know, he, his whole thing in life was to be a fisherman, but Jesus is saying, peace to you, and now you're going to catch people, right? You get to join in my Jesus mission, right? All that power that you just saw in catching all those fish, I know that there's all this hype around the fish, like, oh my gosh, dollars, I have money now, right? But it's not just that. I'm going to give you something greater. I'm going to give you people, the greatest gift of all. I'm going to give you people. You're going to draw them into my kingdom. You're going to be used by me. It's going to be like nothing you've ever seen, right? And Jesus gives us that call. Every single one of us, we receive that call from the Lord. But some of you might be thinking like, no, no, no. I I heard Jesus say that to me when I was a teenager, but I already said no, so I'm out. Like deuces, you know? But it's not true. There's still there's still opportunity for you yet to be part of the Jesus mission, right? To seek and save the lost, to bring heaven on earth, to bring the kingdom right here. After all of this happened with Peter that day on the boat, I mean, he had the, he saw the power of God. He fell on his knees. Get away from me. I'm a sinful man, right? But even after that, you know, Peter denied Jesus, Three times, right? When all that stuff was happening with with Jesus' death and resurrection, all that chaos, he's like, no, I don't know this guy. I I, I don't even know who he is. I don't know Jesus. I don't know that guy, right? But then afterwards, after Jesus was resurrected, he started showing up to different places. And in John 21, you don't have to turn there, but in John 21, Peter is out on the Sea of Galilee, which is the same as the Lake of Gennesaret, right? He's like, I'm going to go fishing. So his friends are like, yeah, I'm going to go too. Let, let's all go. So they all go fishing all night long. Guess what? They catch nothing. They catch absolutely nothing. And it's morning now, and they're about to go back. And they hear this guy on the, on the shore. And the guy's like, hey, do you guys catch any fish? They're like, nope. And the guy's like, hey, put out your nets on the right side of your boat. And they're like, okay. They put down their nets, and there's so many fish that they can't pull them up, right? Peter's having this deja vu moment. (laughs) He's like, I think this has happened before. I, I, I I feel like this is familiar, right? All of a sudden, John says, it's the Lord, right? And so Peter, right, he like gets up, puts on his tunic, jumps in the water and swims to shore to get straight to Jesus because he knows he is Lord, right? And Jesus and Peter have a conversation. And this is a point where Peter gets reinstated after denying Christ three times. Jesus says to him, do you love me, Peter? He's like, yes, I do. He's like, feed my sheep. Okay. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, I do. Take care of my lambs. Okay. Do you love me, Peter? And now he's hurt. Yes, I do. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Follow me. And in that moment, Peter is reinstated. After denying Christ three times, he gets reinstated three times. And I'm telling you, Even if you said no to Jesus 20 times, 200 times, 2,000 times, Jesus will reinstate you every single time. 
every single time. There's hope for you yet, right? Receive God's peace. It's available for you. Receive God's peace and say yes to God's plans. After this, you know how John, you know, Jesus has said, you're going to be fisher of men now. You're going to be a fisher of men. In Acts 2, Peter, this rugged fisherman with no training, no experience, he preaches a sermon so powerful that 3,000 men get saved and baptized that day. Isn't that amazing? And there were more people, but they didn't count women back then because, you know. (laughs) I don't even know. That's another conversation, right? (laughs) Right? Receive God's peace and say yes to God's plans, right? I really believe that our church is supposed to be a river that's supposed to flow to bring life, to bring healing, to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to all those around us. It's time to say yes to that. It's time to say yes to the Jesus mission. Will you pray with me? Jesus, have it your way. Your ways are the best ways. There's no one like you, God. And we believe you, Lord, for who you say you are, for what you want to do through us. Help us to partner with you. Help us, God, to not hide our pain, but to allow it to be your platform. Help us to operate in faith, to trust you, to humble ourselves, and to say yes to what you want to do for us, Lord, and what you want to do in us, what you want to do through us, God. We trust you, Jesus. And so, God, forgive us for doing things our way, for being stubborn, for believing that we're the experts. God, we say you're the expert. You're the Lord, and we trust you, God. And keep praying with me. I really believe that there's people today that need to say yes to Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior. And here's the thing. In Luke 5, 8, when Peter said, I'm a sinful man, it's the best thing in the world to acknowledge that you're a sinner. It will lead to your freedom. It will lead to your liberty. It will lead to your healing. And if there is anyone here that needs to say yes today to Jesus, to say, I admit I'm a sinner. I need to be saved by you. I need to be restored by you. I need to be forgiven by you. I'm going to count to three. And when I raise, when I say three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand to say yes to receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and I declare that he is the one that can heal you, restore you, set you free, make wrong things right in your life. This no-hype Jesus who uses a fishing boat as his platform wants to use your broken life to bring the gospel of Jesus. So I'm going to count to three. Raise your hand. This is your chance to say yes to Jesus. One, two, three. I see you in the back. Thank you. Is there anyone else in this room? Thank you. I see you over there. Thank you. I see you right there, too. Oh, thank you. I saw three people so far. I don't know if I'm missing it. Is there one more? Thank you. Four over there. Thank you. Anyone else? This is your chance to sit. Thank you. I see you in the back, too. Five. Thank you. Say this prayer with me. Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner in the presence of a holy God. Come forgive me. Come forgive me for my pride and my stupidity, for the ways that I've made such a mess. Forgive me for not having a soft heart towards you. Forgive me for doing things my own way. Lord, I need your forgiveness. I need the blood of Jesus to cover me, to forgive me, to make me whole, to set me free. I need your lordship in my life. I need you to save me, to redeem me, to make me what I was always created to be. 
your kid made in your image made for more not made for material things not made for all this dumb razzle dazzle stuff here but made for your purposes for your kingdom god so would you come have your way in my life jesus come rescue me come teach me come show me your ways god protect me defend me god have your way in me lord I need you today. I need Jesus to, to do what only Jesus could do for me. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, your forgiveness. We trust you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.